Hey, it's uh, Stephen Boyle. Okay, so I got a video request, and it's from uh, a guy named Shadester. And Shadester asked me how I met my boyfriend. And I, um, bear with the blushing, because I'm going to blush a lot when I do this video. I met my boyfriend on Grindr. And I know what you're thinking. Yeah, but you know what? Um, don't, don't. Grindr gets a bad rap. And, and we all know why, uh, because there's a lot of, like, creepy freaking people on, on Grindr who are propositioning you to do really gross stuff or, you know, asking you questions that you probably shouldn't start a conversation with or they're sending you nudes right away without really saying hi first or, um, you know, just doing other stuff that is otherwise unappealing. Grinder it can be a scary place, but you know what? Blame people. Don't blame Grinder. Grinder didn't make those people behave that way. Uh, people did. So don't, don't think that Grinder is inherently a gross thing. There are, like, good people on there. That is the short story. The long story, which I think is what you're asking, is a little bit more interesting and uh, kind of cute. If you guys watched my last video, or my, my coming out video, then you know that I used to write for my college. Uh, I was an outspoken gay voice. As a result of that, I got like emails and stuff like that uh, fairly often, just people who, who you know needed advice or wanted to know how to go about it the right way. And uh, you know, I don't have all the answers, um, but I, you know, I wanted to help when I could. I was on Grinder. I was 23 at this point, and I got a message from a, a boy who was 19. He said, hey, you know, I read some of your articles and um, I'm having trouble coming out. I don't know why I'm typing because he texted this, so this doesn't make sense. So immediately in my head, I was like, all right, I have to pull away the fact that this guy is like really, really attractive. He needs help. So I kind of just eliminated this idea that like, you know, I should be interested in this person. How bad I fucked that up. My first piece of advice for, for uh, people who are struggling with coming out, besides doing it on your own time and following your gut, is to get gay friends. And um, I don't know why people don't talk about this more, but that was like really, really important. My first group of gay friends was named the Merry Band of Gays, because I thought it was funny and I got to be Robin Hood in that scenario. Three um, older guys who kind of took me in as a baby bird and taught me how to fly in the gay community. They took me to my first, I'm going to stop doing this, uh, they, they took me to my first gay night and uh, gay nights were something at Penn State, where on Sunday nights, you know, they'd have a uh, gay night, because on Sunday, I guess, you know, they weren't pulling numbers, so they're like, hey, let's aim for a new demographic, like the homos, and we came out, because we need little excuses to go out and have a good time. This was after the, the Mary Band had left, and now I'm hanging out with the crew that I named the Gay Mafia, and <laughs> I knew it's a ridiculous name, but it kind of made sense, because they were all in the service industry. So every bar we went to, they knew us, they knew what we were gonna drink, they, you know, it felt like being in the Mafia. We walked in and it was like, hey! I, I was like, listen, like, come out with us, um, we'll show you what, like, the gay scene at State College is like and kind of, like, ease you into it. We met up, and we met up in a public place, and that's super, super important to everyone. You're meeting somebody, meet them in a public place first, because, you know, granted this boy is now the love of my life, but, uh, he could have been a murderer or something, I, whatever. Don't be too trusting when it comes to, um, online dating. We met at a church and we took him back to my buddy's place, who I'm not gonna say his name because of the context, but we went there and we started pre-gaming. And for pre-gaming, uh, if you don't know what that term means, it means getting trashed before going to a bar so you don't spend too much money at the bar buying drinks. You kind of go there with a the buzz and then you just maintain the buzz. But he didn't because he was underage and he just didn't, yeah, there was, he definitely didn't drink that night or ever at all until his 21st birthday, which is coming. We finally get to the gay night. We went to a bar called Levels, and Levels, you know, uh, actually had levels, like multiple stories. And the first story was for everyone. The next level was the 21 and over section of the club where you could drink. So I'm hanging out with, uh, oh, I just said his name. All right, well, his name's Matt. And so Matt is on the bottom story. And uh, I'm hanging out with him because it's his first gay club, and I remember that experience. It's horrifying because you don't know what's going to happen. I mean, there's a lot to be worried about when you go to your first gay night. Like, number one, am I wearing the right clothes? Am I gonna look too underconfident? Am I gonna look overconfident? Am I gonna get my ass pinched? How many people are gonna hit on me? What if nobody hits on me? What if nobody talks to me? You know, there's tons of things to worry about. So I'm hanging out with him, uh, cause I know that's what I would've wanted. I wouldn't wanna be like, okay, you're here now, I'm gonna go drink and like, peace. I'm hanging out with him on the first story, and he's, you know, he's doing well. He was like, hey, like, if you wanna go get a drink, you don't have to hang out with me the whole time. And I'm like, oh, like, all right, well, I, I do want to go get a drink, but I'll, I'll be right back. I got a whiskey and ginger. Now, uh, I need to pause this story because anytime I say whiskey and ginger, um, I have to acknowledge it for what it is. It is the best drink of all time. You know, Jameson and ginger ale is like 
the perfect thing. I, I have a theory that it's because, like, you know, like God wanted to give us something as like a consolation prize after kicking us out of Eden. So he was like, hey, like, here's this wonderful thing called whiskey. And, you know, here's ginger ale. And if you pour them together, this is what I made for you. So anyway, I'm upstairs and I'm drinking the elixir of God. I'm kind of like looking out of the corner of my eye just to, you know, check on, check on Matt because I was, you know, I was worried about how he'd handle the situation, I guess. And, you know, I was worried and I wanted to be a good mentor. <laughs> and this guy approaches him. And, you know, in, in my head, I should have been like, look at that. Like, he's, he's out there. He's talking to guys. Like, he's, he's doing it. Like, good for him. But instead, I had one of those cartoon moments where you can see that they turn red, like, on a line, and then it goes up to their forehead, and then steam comes out of their ears. And I had never experienced this before, because I'm not, like, a jealous person, and I don't get, like, angry easily. Um, but I did. I was like angry and territorial and all these things I had never really experienced before uh, that night. And so um, I just went on overdrive and it was probably the whiskey. It might have been um, the intense feeling of jealousy. It might have been the fact that I, I felt the feels. And so I, I drank my drink and I ran downstairs and this guy was talking to him and they're, they're standing like this, okay? And I, and I totally cock blocked. I like just, I sidestepped the other dude like this was him, you, you know, like right behind him. I sidestepped him and I just swooped in for the kiss. Wow, that was really up close and personal. But that's exactly what happened. I kissed him and well, we celebrated a year, like a week ago. I, I've never had a person in my life that I, I wanted to call them about the most minute details of my life, you know, the little things. I planted one on him and then we left the club to go have a civilized conversation over coffee. <laughs> but when you're gay, you kind of get to do the give and take. You know, there's no like protocol as to who pays or who asks who or whatever. So I figured, hey, I, I made the first move. You should ask me out on the first date. My boyfriend's kryptonite is making decisions. It was really, really funny to watch him struggle with trying to figure out what, what our first date would be. Um, so I said, listen, like, you know, just, just come over and tell me what we're doing and we're just gonna go do it. Behind the scenes, he's talking to his friends. He's like, what should I, what should I, what should I do? Like, what should I ask him to do? I get a knock on my door. I open the door and he's dressed in like shorts and sneakers and like a t-shirt and he's like, all right, I got it figured out. If you don't want to do this, we don't have to do it. And I'm like, babe, like, what is it? Like, what are we gonna do? And he goes, we're going rock climbing. And that was when I was like, I'm going to fucking wife you. And you know what guys, like, dude, there's something to be said about unconventional dates. It doesn't always have to be dinner and a movie. We went rock climbing, we had an absolute blast. I don't know what the secret is. In the grand scheme of things, this is still a relatively new relationship. I love the shit out of him. And I'm really glad you guys asked. I hope this story was kind of like fun. I don't know if it's gonna help anyone, but I certainly have fun telling it. You know the deal. Uh, you know, if, if you like this, please like it. And if you dig my messages or in, you know, kind of like dig this kind of stuff, you know, like it and subscribe and stuff.